I should probably tell a story of how we first met Georgie because we were, we were doing these workshops and looking for uh, yeah there's amazing um, casting lady called Anna McCauley who found Georgie and Casey but we we did these workshops and we we met with Georgie and we sat down I don't do you remember I sort of took the mickey out of Georgie and he just kicked me in the shins <laughs> so uh, I had this huge bruise and then Alistair just started laughing so he kicked him in the shin and we went home with these two purple marks on our legs <laughs> and thought we found him you know <laughs>
I know it's something that Alice has been working on for about 10, 12 years. Um, we're together, so that's how I got involved <laughs> with it. Um, and I just absolutely, as the script developed over years, it became a kind of, it was a, um, it was a labour of love that slowly started unravelling in our flat, you know, and every time I read another scene, and especially the scene with the super goats, I just, because <laughs> I, you know, read scripts, an actress, whatever, but I just thought it was a thing of beauty and a thing of depth, and I just loved um, the language, you know, I think it was so clever, and also this little chap here, I don't think he's been mentioned enough, because I just <laughs> thought he was so <laughs> Just so brilliant. Um, it's funny you mentioned the language. There's a lot of language around children. How did you handle those scenes and how did you direct Georgie and his sister in, in this film? Well, um, I should probably tell a story of how we first met Georgie because we, we were doing these workshops and looking for, uh, yeah, there's an amazing um, casting lady called Anna McCauley who found Georgie and Casey. But we, we did these workshops and we... We met with Georgie and we sat down. I don't. Do you remember? I sort of took the Mickey out of Georgie and he just kicked me in the shins. <laughs> so uh, I had this huge bruise and then Alistair just started laughing. So he kicked him in the shin, and we went home with these two purple marks on our legs, and thought we found him. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and Georgie, you know, you said you'd driven cars before, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> the less said about the better, but um, Michael, uh, how, what, what kind of research did you do into this role? How did you, because you're not playing with your usual accent, you're playing a very different accent. What kind of research did you do into this community? Um, well, it was, the, you know, the first and foremost, it was the script again. Um, uh, just uh, when I read it, it was, there was a freshness to it. Uh, it was very raw. It didn't. Um, it just was more like a, f a slap in the face. Uh, by the time I finished reading it, and so it immediately had my attention. Um, I watched the documentary then uh, as a follow-up, and I was, you know, t completely hooked. Uh, so between those two things, th that's where I spent most of my time. And then I had recordings of um, the accent uh, of the area and the, and the community and. Uh, and that was just my lines were uh, recorded by Biz, and I had those, and I was uh, practicing them over and over again, uh, many hours, and just trying to sort of you know incorporate it and ingest it. Uh, and in terms of uh, understanding the traveling community, I, I you know it's something in Ireland that, that there's a large traveling community there, and there was a settled family in in the village that I grew up that I was friends with, so it was something that was part of the way I grew up. It was, uh, and also, it, it was, it was a, you know, it was kind of a hot uh, topic. It was, a, it was, it was this, you know, there was constant, you know, discussions about, you know, why there's not more harmony between the settled community and the traveling community. That was always a topic I remember in, in the news and topical debate shows when I was a, a kid and a teenager. So. Um, it spoke to me when, when I read when I read the script. Then I met Adam, and I, I could tell you know there was an intelligent, you know, passionate filmmaker there, and that was it. It's easy. Can you drive that well? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> uh, he's he's being modest. <laughs> and we've got time for audience questions. If everybody has a, a question over here. No, we didn't. We tried to keep it as as truthful as possible wherever wherever possible we shot with i think we did one scene in the low loader and it wasn't the chase scene so we didn't use low loaders we didn't use shots that were kind of outside if it was outside the car then it was car to car stuff and it, we just wanted it, you to be in there with them you know and that was even when there was a shot from outside it wasn't that kind of shot where it's from the side and it's a you know a classic kind of move across because that felt like it killed the the energy of it so so i looked at a lot of 
great kind of 70s. There's a film called The Driver. I don't know if anyone knows that. It's, um, it's got some amazing um, sequences in it and, and Vanishing Point. And that stuff felt a lot more truthful than the more kind of fast and furious um, Russian arm kind of showy off stuff in a way, you know. That's also the the big person I've got to ask is one of the things that the guy that uh, the film was inspired by said to me before the film. He said, "Just make sure the chases are good." <laughs> They're not going to subtitle in America, which I was really pleased about. But I think that's partly because English people can't understand it either. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know whether it was a conscious decision. I, I, like, I just, I love the way they talk. I love that backstreet Cheltenham accent. It's like the West Country, but without, it's clipped, you know, it's the, it's just a brilliant, brilliant accent. And actually you don't hear it very often where it's not comedic or it's not with that slight kind of irony to it or the kind of piss take to it, you know. And in terms of the slang and the, it wasn't really a conscious decision. I just tried to, tried, you, you know, I just tried to, copy basically what how they spoke and I, I was lucky enough to be writing to one of them um, in prison and he spelt everything the way he, it sounded and that gave me a real kind of clue as to how it should be written and then Adam was quite strict that if there was a boring line in the film I'd have to rewrite it basically. You know. <laughs> Can I just ask the actors, were you concerned about swearing in front of children? Was that something, have you ever done that in a movie before? <laughs> Could be quite deep that one, couldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Lindsay? Um, um, let me think. Um, it was just a, you know, a fantastic experience, and I, I felt very moved and proud sitting there watching it. Just because, you know, just that question about language. We've had so many talks about, well, it should be subtitled. Should was Train Spotting subtitled? Do you think maybe in America? Well, in I think what we've done, you know, whether it works or not, is just something really brave and really different and really just something that I haven't seen before. That doesn't really answer your question at all, but it's just me. Yeah. And and truthful as well. I think you know. I think that from the from the script to the performances, it's it's got a truth and an authenticity that. That's what that's what we were aiming for, and and it you know you can feel it sometimes some of the screenings we've done where it it, it moves people and it and that's you know that's it's got a heart you know I was about to say that it's got heart yeah, yeah definitely for sure one very quick last question if anybody has one I think we've said it all thank you very much and thank you to the makers of Trust thank you Daniel.